This building, which once housed the Empire Button Works, is the last remnant of the pearl button industry that at one time was the economic mainstay of Guttenberg. Unnoticed by most people, it is located on the banks of the Mississippi River, just south of Lock and Dam No. 10. Like ancient artifacts of a time gone by, clam shells with their perfectly round holes are strewn about the driveway behind the rock building. All in all, there were three pearl button factories in Guttenberg. This one was the most successful and lasted the longest. In the end, however, it was a victim of Japanese imports and the plastic revolution. It closed its doors in 1959, never to reopen. The Empire Button Works factory was opened in 1909 by a New York-based company and was managed for 50 years by Chris Frummeld. In the beginning, it employed 50 button cutters and carters and at one time was Guttenberg's biggest employer, making buttons by the millions. It was powered by electricity, a feature not available when previous pearl button factories were started. Frommeld would stock a thousand tons of freshwater mussel shells, commonly called clam shells, every fall to keep them in operation through the winter. Many of the shells were from the Mississippi River, but they were also brought from every state as well as Canada. They were shipped in by river barge and by rail, and in later years by truck. This was not the first pearl button factory to come to Guttenberg, however. In 1899, the town elders made a deal with a New York-based company to bring a factory to the community. By January of 1900, it had 83 employees. In 1907, a second plant was started by three men who saw the economic gain of the first and was called the Guttenberg Pearl Button Company. The process of making pearl buttons began with sorting the shells for different size buttons. The circular buttons were hand sawed or stamped out of the shells by belt driven power machines. Then they were colored in crocks of various dyes or left natural. Finally they were sent to finishing plants where they were ground down to desired thickness, polished and carted for sale. At various times some of this was done in the Guttenberg plants. Leftover shells were either ground for chicken grit or sold to chemical companies that made use of their high content of lime. The meat from the mussel was sold as fish bait or used in livestock feed. In 1911, the button cutting industry in Guttenberg was at its peak. All three plants were in full operation and employed over 200 men. Many of them had come from other towns. They settled in Guttenberg, married local girls, and helped the community grow. By the time the depression hit, only the Empire Button Works, now known as the American Pearl Button Company, was still in operation. Struggling to survive, the town stepped in with some needed financial aid to keep the factory alive. Conditions improved in the mid-1930s and the plant employed women operators for the first time. Soon after World War II, however, the factory began its decline. Their working force in the Guttenberg plant slipped from 100 to 35 in 10 years after plastic started being used extensively in button making. It also suffered from Japanese competition. In 1959, the American Pearl Button Company switched over to plastic and shut down the branch plant in Guttenberg. Today, the building is owned by Dirk and Rose Cam and is used for storage.